gentlemen, welcome to the Community Recreation Commission meeting for Thursday, April 25th. We will call the meeting to order at 6.09. If everybody would stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yay. Oops, sorry, Wendy. All right. I would like a motion to approve the agenda as submitted. Approve. Ethel, second. Brandon. Brandon. Any discussion? So moved. Madam Secretary submitted the minutes for March 28th meeting. I hope everybody got a chance to read them, and I would like a motion to approve the minutes from the March 28th meeting. Motion to approve the minutes. Kyle, second Ethel. Any discussion? So moved. I'm not sure why presentations is on here, but we will go to number five, public comment. All good? Okay, <laughs> thank you. My, re my chairperson's report, I will uh, get to that at when we're down to 10D. And Ms. Kim O'Farrell, our recreation director, has some information for us. Same color almost. A lot. A lot. Good evening, commission and community. Um, lots of updates in the recreation department. We're getting ready for uh, summer and lots going on. As you can see on the screen, this will be the cover of the profile that should be, be hitting your homes within a week, week and a half. That has all the summer class listings, programs, events, everything from golf to aerobics, to pool hours, to everything that you need to know what's happening in the recreation department. So I just wanted to give you a preview of what to look for coming in the mail. Um, and it's a, it's a great, great magazine. I'm very excited. It took us some time to put it together. It's very big. Lots of great articles about the community. So I am pleased to show you the cover of that. I'm going to go through a couple of the events happening this summer. Um, we're bringing back the car shows uh, to Water's Edge and Smokies, and they're called History on Wheels. I know these pictures are a little bit blurry because um, I took them from the profile, but if you are interested in displaying your classic car, um, we're going to host those on Tuesdays. The dates are there from 5 to 8 p.m. right outside Smokies. Um, hopefully good weather. Obviously, if the weather is thunder and lightning, we will not have or even expect, expect classic cars to come out to the property. So, um, but good weather, just stop on out. It's a great, we started these last year. We had, um, you know, about 15 to 17 cars um, for our shows last year. We're expecting to have 15 to 30 this year from what the talk of um, the group that's doing this. So I'm very excited to bring that back. And there is a registration fee this year um, because we are doing judging and there will be prizes awarded for um, each month or each time that the cars come on board. So it's a little bit more organized. That's the third Tuesday, right? That's correct. Okay. Sure. Um, the last day of school pool party uh, it will be Thursday, June 13th from 1 to 4. Uh, there will be DJ, entertainment, hot dogs, chips, drinks, swimming time. Um, food will be served between 2 and 3. And it will be at our Water's Edge pool. Um, it's $6 a person. Um, anybody under the age of 10 must be accompanied by a parent um, that's paid as well. So come out and have a great time. So is Thursday actually the last day or is it's, the last day on Wednesday? No, oh. it's yeah, Thursday. It's a half day for the kids. Mm -hmm. okay, we have um, a couple of new things coming. We have the Mom to Mom sale. This is Saturday, June 22nd from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. This is at the farm. So if you are looking to get rid of some um, old children's clothing, um, maternity items, toys, this is kid-friendly items that we're looking for. Um, this is a great event. Other communities are doing it. We thought we'd bring it here to the island. Thank you, Wendy. Um, it is $10 to rent a table. Uh, this is for a six-foot table, and hopefully we can get this program off the ground. So thank you for bringing this to the department. I appreciate that. And if folks want multiple tables, they can do that as well. Yeah. So. And on the second table. Supply the tables for them. Yeah. 
Water's Edge is um, on that same day. So I'm thinking the moms will be at the mom-to-mom sale, and the, the guys are going to come do the golf scramble. So this is our first annual golf scramble. It's Saturday, June 22nd. Um, tee off uh, at 8 a.m. It's $40 per person, so we have lots of prizes. We're gathering right now. Um, golf prizes, baskets, those types of things. This is the first time we are putting together a scramble. Um, so I'm thankful that I have a golf manager now, Larry Davis, who is on board with us and doing great managing a lot of the golf events and all of our um leagues that have actually started up so if you have any you know have questions about this just give us a call and we can get you registered i have a question what's a scramble <laughs> scramble different at each hole there's like different activities oh so, yeah did you know what that was i did yeah we'll take you golfing chad okay Obviously, I've talked probably since January about our youth summer camp. Um, registration is going on now. Um, you can do that online, and there is the uh, $30 non-refundable activity fee that will hold your child's spot for the summer. Um, we are starting to, to get a lot of registrations, and our max capacity for our camp is 50 kids. So if you know that this is where you want your child to be, I would suggest making sure that you... Um, register your child and lock their spot in so and again we, we haven't changed anything from last year we still kind of have the same schedule we've just added an extra swim day the swim days are Tuesdays and Thursdays Thursdays at Water's Edge Monday Wednesday and Friday will be at the farm and the hours are from 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. and for parents I've had a couple of calls about early drop-off and late pickup um, we need to have a minimum of eight kids in the morning and a minimum of eight kids to be able to offer before and after care. Um, so if, if there's parents that are going to work early, we can accommodate, but we still have to have a minimum um, number of kids so we can staff that properly. So, But we will work with you on those early uh, drop-offs and late pickups. So, And then the orientation, anyone that is even thinking about camp or not sure about camp, and you just want to come meet all the um, counselors, Danielle, our assistant camp director, you can join us June 4th from 6.30 to 7.30. If you're not sure, if you're kind of toggling with what you're going to do, because you don't have to pre-register your kids for the whole summer. You can register them a week at a time, which is nice. A lot of places don't do that. We are doing it kind of week by week, as long as you register by Wednesday at 5 p.m., the week prior to when your kids want to come. We will take those kids. And, again, that is for staffing purposes with the state of Michigan. We have to follow um, certain ratios for ages. So, But um, lots of things planned this year. So, And, again, lots of donations. I put a Facebook post up, and I have piles of really cool stuff from the community, arts and crafts, board games, I, you name it. So I just want to say thank you for those that dropped off those items for camp. Yes. Yeah, basically got to be six before the first day of camp. Darn. <laughs> um, uh, I think we've talked a little bit about this. Um, Robert Sawyer presented this, I think, to festival, um, the festival commission. But we have put this event into play. This is the three versus three street hockey cup. The boys and men are June 29th from nine to six, and the girls and women are June. I'm sorry, July 20th from nine to six. It's 150 per team. Um, if you want to register, and I, I'm drawing a blank right now, I will get the website that you can register. This is not through – it's with the Recreation Department, but there's a separate website um, for registrations, and I will get that shortly. So, But this is fun. Hockey season just ended for a lot of kids, including myself. But, again, we just kind of picked up with spring hockey. And, um, again, this is um, a joint partnership with um, Robert Sawyer, um, who has a very strong background in hockey with his son's coaching. Um, I'm a hockey lover, and we want to put our community rink in use in the summer. Um, we had about 12 to 13 days of ice this past year, so it wasn't heavily used. So we're trying to program the community rink as much as we can um, and bring in revenues for that as well to help pay down that debt that we still carry.
Ooh, swimming pool. <laughs> Hard to think swimming right now, but it's coming. Um, Water's Edge Pool, we are going to open, obviously, on the last day of school, which is June 13th. And all this information that you're seeing will be in the profile that's coming to your house. So I'm just kind of going over it. So if you're tuning in and watching, you kind of know what's coming. Um, the hours are the same as last year, but we are going to have Thursday nights be our late nights. We will be keeping the pool open till 830 on Thursdays, which is in conjunction with our concert series. So if the kids want to swim and mom and dad want to go to the concert, I think that'd be a nice tie in there. Um, Saturday and Sunday, 12 to 7, rates are still the same. We've kept everything the same. Our pool passes did not increase. Our family passes did not increase this year. So they're, it's a good value for the summer. Uh, last year, and it was hot last summer. I was out there, and we were packed. So if you're looking for a place to swim, we've, we're doing um, upgrades as well. We, each year we're trying to do something new out there with the pool. I had um, the cement replaced. We're having a lot of the fencing repaired this year. Our fencing is kind of falling down. Um, so that's going to be taken care of. Um, I'm actually, a uh, new filtration system is going in in mid-May, and I'm hoping to have the pool open and running mid-May. But, again, we can't open until uh, June 13th, so in case we have some problems with the opening. Is that hard? Can you guys see now? Okay, golf. And golf is... We've been open for a week, but obviously we're battling the rain. Um, the carts came in on Tuesday, so carts are available for use. Um, we've had calls that said, why can't we take the carts out after a heavy downpour? Again, Water's Edge does not have cart paths like the country club does. So you're taking your cart out on the course. And even just recently on hole number two, a person actually got their cart stuck. So, you know, those are the, the reasons that if we say we can't take the carts out, that's the only reason we say we can't take the carts out because the course is just saturated, it's wet, it's unsafe, and mud is flying. Um, but anytime we can get those carts out for you, same with the range, same exact thing. We can't pick up balls if they're stuck in the grass in the mud. So there might be times that the range is closed and it might be sunny outside. We need to let that especially way in the back on the range, it gets, it's, it's, it's a swamp. So, um, so be patient with us. If we, we don't have things open, that is because we can't maintain or pick up balls. But again, prices stayed the same this year. There was no increase. Um, the only difference, we have increased the range tokens, um, the tokens itself. They are $6 per bucket. That means you're going to walk in and buy a token physically in the pro shop, but if you use your credit card at the machine, this is the driving range, it's $5.25. So kind of think before you walk in, What ha the reason of the increase, we ran out of tokens last year. People were buying those tokens in hordes, okay, lots and lots, which is great, not <laughs> complaining, but we didn't have the return on investment with the tokens. So we ran out of tokens, but people were not using them. So, um, but you're still more than welcome to come in. You can buy a token. There's a three token limit this year, so we do not run out of tokens. Um, but again, it's so much easier not to even stop in the pro shop, go right to the driving range, swipe your credit card. It's five dollars and twenty-five cents for a bucket. Any questions? Okay, I got one more thing. Um, proud to say. Five years later. If you in the control room can get the picture of that bus out there too, they might be able to do that. Yeah, it looks good. The clarity is good. There you go. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, this is the bus we've been waiting for. Um, a grant was put in by our previous director, Ms. Boyd, I believe at the end of 2015. <coughs> mm -hmm. um, so here we are, 2019. Uh, I picked it up on Tuesday. That's how long it took to get this bus. Um, so I'm proud to say that we do have the bus. It does say with, in conjunction with Grow Seal. You can't really see it on the photo here. This is a 13-passenger bus with seating for two wheelchairs. 
Um, so we can transport our residents that are wheelchair bound. And are they going to shoot out there, though? They are. He said he just came out and said it's on, out there, the yeah. camera. Yeah. So a um, couple of things about the bus. Um, I don't want the bus to be misconstrued for daily transportation for our seniors. This is a very, very big bus. Um, I went through training uh, yesterday for two hours, and, you know, there's there's a lot of bells and whistles on this. This bus is going to be only used for per people with disabilities that need the wheelchair lift, okay? We're going to continue with our transit for our seniors. Meals on Wheels program stays the same. Regular transportation in the transit stays the same. This bus is a special use bus, and that's how the department is going to operate it. Um, even though we receive the bus on a lease with no fees attached to it, there are always fees, which is maintenance, paying a driver, gas, those types of things. So we're going to start putting, um, my goal is to get our drivers trained. Um, we are still in paperwork for our drug testing site. We have to be included in a third party drug testing site. So that, that paperwork is still in process. So we have about six weeks yet to go before we get this bus on the road. I know a lot of people saw it up at Water's Edge, and we got a call and said, oh, are we, are, is the bus ready to go? Unfortunately, it's not that easy. So um, I think we've waited, you know, almost, what, five years, four and a half years. Mm -hmm. um, we will get this bus on the road this summer for our people that are wheelchair bound. So um, I will get as much information as I can out, you know, it's hard to get that information out to the seniors, and a lot of our, the seniors are watching us right now. Please call me um, if you want to get on a list. I'm going to start a list of the seniors that are in need of this type of transportation so we can have them. And then once we're ready to go, I will contact them and say, here's the schedule. Here's what we're doing. The other use for this bus is going to be senior mini trips. Now, we can carry 13 people and two wheelchairs, or we can carry... 15 people, okay? Um, we're going to utilize it for small senior bus trips, whether it's to Walmart or to the mall or we're going bowling or wherever we go. Um, we're going to put a schedule together for our seniors. And Ethel, you're going to be in charge of that. I hate to throw that at you, but, you know, that's your cup of tea. And um, we'll just get input from our seniors on how they would like to use this bus and where they would like to go. Obviously, you know, with this type of bus, it's not a charter bus. We don't want to be you know, driving three hours in this type of vehicle. This is more of a 45 minutes at the max, maybe an hour drive kind of bus. So we'll get some input from our seniors, see where they'd like to go, and we'll start putting that together. Is there a, uh, have you come up with the cost or what it's going to cost per trip? For, for, we're going to keep the price the same as the transit um, for just general, you know, transportation. If we have a senior that needs to go to the doctor, it's $5 round trip on island and $6 round trip mm. off island so and those are the fees that that the department put in play with the regular transit is there as well. a minimum uh, amount of people that we have to have to use that bus no there is not because I, I i've talked to a few seniors that are wheelchair bound um you know and again if they have a doctor's appointment we're going to do the very best we can to get them there but again i can't put this in operation five days a week so it'll be more like if we're going to run it on tuesdays so the person that needs transportation will make every attempt to schedule their appointments on Tuesdays. We just don't know what day yet. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the big news, and the bus is here, and I think that's all I have. Any questions? Good? Okay. All good for Kim? Thanks. Can you turn that screen back on? Or Yeah, Mike, the heat's kicking on in here. Oof. <laughs> I know my township gets cranky. Mm -hmm. I got a mouse and everything up here. There you go. Okay, and next is old business. I don't think we have any old business, do we? New business. We will get to the subcommittee reports then. I guess we'll skip number A, <laughs> Nelson. No township liaison tonight. 
Next will be open space, Kyle DeBose. Sure. Um, or is it DeBose? Uh, uh, you said it right the second time. <laughs> De- okay. DeBose. Everybody knows now. <laughs> it's hard. As long as you say the silent, silent T, you're good. Kyle. Um, so lots happening in open space. Um, the ferry trail extension is moving forward. So is the trail extension in Manchester Woods. Um, both trails are being built uh, with an eye kind of towards the topography, or in other words, just keep it high so that the wood chips don't get too wet and they're able to be usable um, uh, for longer. Um, uh, and also, they're in the process of setting a date for a possible millage proposal for open space maintenance. Um, the funds to purchase open space, which were approved some time ago, are starting to, to run out. Um, and so in order to continue to um, maintain our open space here on the island, uh, a millage is being proposed. So uh, the next open space meeting is um, the first Tuesday of the month, which I believe is May 7th. Um, and, uh, and there are many events coming up that are open space related as well. Uh, most significant this weekend, um, there's a big island cleanup uh, led by the Kiwanis, uh, a recreation partner. Um, there's lots of activities happening all over the island. If you'd like to register, uh, go online and register exactly where you'd like to clean up. You're, a- you're able to choose any place you'd like to go. Um, there's some activities. The Groziel Nature and Land Conservancy is doing their, their own version at, the, at Centennial Farm um, and, uh, and has coffee and donuts there. Uh, the cleanup is 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. island-wide, but you can do it any time. And, and same thing at Centennial Farm. It's 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. when the Groziel Nature and Land Conservancy is doing that. Uh, I also want to mention that Friends of the Detroit River is doing a river cleanup that same day. Uh, so at Trenton Rotary Park across the river from us, um, they will have boats um, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. You're, you can do it. They will have lunch for you. They're asking for people to have bo- uh, that have any boats that they can help take people, but that's also an interesting thing if you want to clean up that way. Um, and then the following day on April 28th uh, is Earth Day uh, at Centennial Farm. Uh, that's 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. There will be various activities and presentations. Definitely encourage people to show up for that. Um, and then finally, May 11th, um, Open Space is doing their Dump the, Chun- uh, Dump the Junk, Find a Treasure event. Um, again, the history of this is people used to dump stuff in our open space here on the island, and so they created this um, so people could dump, dump their stuff there. Um, it's become a place also where people find a lot of good stuff, so if you have lightly used furniture or appliances, you can go check that out and see if there's something you can pick up for your house or for anyone that you'd like. Um, some things that you're not supposed to bring are hazardous waste, concrete or bricks, um, and items with liquids or batteries or things like that. Um, and that Dump the Junk, Find a Treasure event is, again, Saturday, May 11th, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the DPS Maintenance Yard here on 855 Grow Road. Uh, and then finally, another recreation partner, the Groziel Historical Society, which I am on the board of, is um, doing an adult ghost hunt um, from 5.30 to 8 p.m. on May 18th. This is a new event they're doing this year with a, a group called the Paranormal Seekers Society of Michigan. Um, they've already been to both the Customs House and the, uh, and the, the um, train station where the museum is, and supposedly they've found ghosts. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, uh, please come by and, and uh, learn a little bit about it. Again, it's, a, it's for adults, so 18 plus, they will require an ID when you get there, and there will be a light snack served. It's $25. Um, and I think that's everything I got. Lots for open space, but that's, that's it for now. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, 2 to 4 p.m. It's like an Earth Week, because didn't we just have an Earth Day, too? Right, Earth, Earth Day, Day was Monday. Day. Yeah, 22nd. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. Kim, any update about um, Sunrise Park? Is it open? Is the yep. Playscape open? All that? Yeah, all the parks are open. Playscape and Sunrise are both open. Kayak Slide is um, up and running at Sunrise. Um, Playscape um, did a walk through the other day. We had a call um, from a resident. I, I think it was on Sunday. Um, we had a broken board going up the stairs. Um, obviously, responded immediately. Um, but I'm going to just mention to our residents, especially at the Playscape, that is an older structure, and there is wear and tear out there. Um, I walked it over and over again, making sure there's no nails sticking up, no sharp edges. But again, you know, that's going to continue to happen as the years go on with this structure. So I just ask residents, you know, please call the department. We're, we're going to respond within, you know, within an hour to get out there. Um, we don't want anyone getting hurt ex- at, at either of the playgrounds, but um, we had that board repaired um, within the hour. 
So just keep your eyes peeled, parents. Um, you know, the bees are going to be coming again. That's another thing. We do spray <coughs> both of our playgrounds, but sometimes they just keep coming back up in those hives at the playscape. So, um, and obviously sunscreen, all those safety things. I've already discussed Water's Edge, and I think that's about it. Good. Thank you. On to 10D, which is me, cultural and special events. There's a little gig coming up in a couple of weeks called Island Fest. If we can get the control room to go to the website here, I'm going to walk the people through it. If you didn't, are we on? Right. Thanks, Mike. If uh, you didn't see this last week at the festival meeting, I'll go through it again. It's GrozillaIslandFest.com. Obviously, I'm on the home page. If you click on the schedule, it's going to take you to every – and. Every other day we have things coming on. So Friday we have the foam party. We have Atomic Radio's the headlining band. We have the Children's Choir. Saturday the, D the Detroit Institute of Arts is coming in to do a craft area. GR5 is our opening band with Wisteria as the headlining band. We're repeating the foam party on Saturday night too. So Friday and Saturday from 6 to 9 foam party on the north side of the hangar. Um, the fireworks are at 10 p.m. on Saturday. Something new this year is a petting zoo. There is no charge for the petting zoo. It will be there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from when the time the festival opens until dusk on Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday they close at 4. So come on down, see the exotic animals. Woo! Chad, where do, where do people meet? We had a couple calls for the historical tours. Where, where is that pickup at? They're going to meet between the parking lot where the pilot house is and the gate right here, at town, the road that comes into Township Hall. Okay. and you, also, Yeah. And then also for the parade, can you just tell people where to go, how to register, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> she threw me under the bus. No pun intended. Um, yeah. So you, uh, well, they go to the middle school and the high school. Anybody jump in here if you want to help me. And then they're fed from both schools, right, Wendy? Yes. And they go down to East River. They approach Macomb Street. They're going to head west on Macomb Street all the way to Meridian. They'll turn right on Meridian, which is north, and then go right on Gray's Drive. And then you'll go back up, and they'll disperse there. The police will be there to give you directions and That's everything. at 10 a.m., correct? Yes. Okay. The parade lineup is at 930. So and the parade starts at 10 a.m. that Saturday morning. And why is it not on the Saturday here on the website yet? Hmm. Be sure to register. Yeah, and you have to have a, a registration form, which either you can get on the website, or we have them at Water's Edge as well. If people right. are not in the mood for the computer thing they can stop in and fill one out as well and then sunday is the classic car show from noon to three if you want to register your car the registrations will be up on this website or you can pick one up at the recreation department of water's edge mirror image which is two young uh, i think they're twin boys will be performing for an hour and then holland mercy woo -woo, andrew johnson and his group will be performing starting from one until four on sunday Make sure that you come down and support all your vendors, crafters, exhibitors. The next tab on here is the applications. You're going to click on that after we just got done talking. If you want to go to the parade, there's the parade right here. And I'll open the app really fast and show you guys what this one looks like. So there's a cover letter for each one of these applications. Um, boom, boom, boom. That's a polar bear in a snowstorm. <laughs> all right, well... <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> I'm waiting for a document. Well, oh, there we go. Okay, so if you want to be in the parade, all the info is right here. There's the application. The deadline is May 15th, but I'm sure we can squeeze a couple dates in after that, too. And then parade rules and regulations. I mean, whoever gets behind the horses, that's how it is, man, you know? <laughs> I get a lot of requests. Please don't put us behind the horses. <laughs> but why? And um, let me get rid of this one. All right. And then, like I said, you go back to the applications. There's sponsors. This event is run 100% on sponsorships. Sponsorships are so important. And if you don't have the money and you want to, we can do a custom sponsorship for you. If you want to come in and volunteer your time or, or donate something, we will be more than happy to set up a custom sponsorship. But for those of you that want to do something like a platinum, a silver, bronze, et cetera, it tells you what you get. The higher you go, the more tickets you get for the VIP fireworks, which is a little area we set up on the other side of the airport here <clears throat> in the field. 
and it includes dinner and adult beverages and then kids meals too and that's sixty dollars per person that's the vip tickets for the fireworks otherwise they're free to the community so please go and be a sponsor for island fest and let's make this a good one and then once again there's the volunteers if you want to be a volunteer you click on that and each one of these screens there's a volunteer tab at the top so no matter where you're on this website you're going to get there to be a volunteer we have ethel down there she's already volunteered martha out there is volunteered and if you do volunteer you get a snazzy a snazzy little shirt that says hashtag love my island i don't know if the camera flat back on me or not and then it's the island fest logo on the front so help out with your community and become a volunteer if you do click on that tab it will take you to all the days and times and openings we have you just need to enter your email address twice and it will and fill you in your spot there all righty and then so just go to grosvilleislandfest.com we did the applications if you sponsor five hundred dollars or more your company logo will be on the website plus it will be on all our social media platforms as GITV I'm gonna get with Chad and start sending him things so that's with $500 and up you're on all our social media platforms there's a little about page um, that the historical society did a few years ago Pam e. Taylor was the president of the time Kyle you might want to look into this and see what needs to be updated mr. Westcroft there got it we don't need to do it right now but <laughs> <laughs> no chad it didn't happen in 1982 okay and then uh and then one of my favorite things is my blog i have a blog on island fest the website and anything that's happening around island fest time there's little stories that will get popped up here well i don't know what happened there so anyways grozealislandfest.com please be a sponsor a volunteer exhibitor apps are up there too it's may 31 june 1 2 it's a great event all right that does it for ireland fest i want to thank everybody that came out to the easter contest or easter party we had at centennial farms we had a few hundred people it was i don't know how kim's done this two years in a row but the weather was amazing and uh thank you mr easter bunny wish you could be here tonight but i know there's other duties for a bunny <laughs> and uh so thank you guys for all that and concerts at water's edge this summer those are always a big thing starting excuse me june 20th every thursday night through august 22nd that's every thursday for the month of june july and august there is a concert lineup i'm not going to read them all but they will be in the new grozeal profile magazine along with there'll be posters around town and sponsors as well and we are doing sponsorships for this too there's different sponsor levels a gold sponsor for 500 bucks you get an 8 by 10 tent you get to pick your concert that you want to sponsor right first, right? Come first serve on the concert special seating with the tent and drink tickets and then you get beverage tickets um you get a banner with your name too and your banner that's hung all season long down by the Fox. by the marina so i know they've done this in the past a few years ago so we'd like to bring that back so come and sponsor there's everything from 100 to 300 to 500 dollar levels sponsor a concert at water's edge this summer and you get all kinds of perks with that um, the times, the, uh, the in June and July, they're 7 to 9 p.m. And then, uh, I take that back, the end of July. As it gets dark out earlier, the concerts start earlier. All right, so just okay. keep that in mind. So nobody's tumbling down the hill or anything. Great. But yeah, they got a lot of, we got a lot of good people coming. So um, remember that sponsorships for that. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Brandon Antosh, our finance director, our finance guy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Brandon. Right, you thanks, got the Jack. same uh, color thing tonight, huh? Your wife put you in that? No, thanks, Megan. <laughs> I dress myself. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, so just a quick finance update, and you'll find out why it's going to be pretty quick here in a second. Uh, the new total budget uh, for the 2019 fiscal year is one million and eleven thousand, and we are three weeks into that budget. Oh. So not a lot of activity to report, um, except that total revenues were at 151 thousand, and expenses were at 106 thousand. So we're, we're 40. Off to a good start. We're off to a great start. <laughs> so. Um, the activity for for April uh, revenues were driven by uh, uh, summer dockage fees at the marina um, that was seventy seven thousand 
Um, the festival budget, we've got uh, sponsor sponsorships and concessions uh, that came in for about twenty grand, and uh, the general rec uh, fund, which includes a fifty thousand uh, tax allocation for April. Uh, the expenses at one hundred and six thousand. Uh, those were driven by uh, the golf course at 26 and the marina at 2000 and the recreation department, which covers uh, programs and, and payroll and, and benefits. And uh, not much else to discuss what's going on with finance except for that, uh, you know, 2018. Uh, Kim did a great job managing the budget, and I, I expect that we'll we'll have a a repeat in 2019 hopefully uh, we're already off to a great start and uh, you know the better we manage the budget uh, the more programs and activities that we we can have here on the island to support everyone and uh, hi girls be good for mom and and take a bath <laughs> that's I, all I have I want to congratulate Love Brandon you. on his uh, baby boy that's gonna be coming this fall so congratulations Brandon and Megan, I think you had something to do with that, too. He's got three girls, and now he's got a little boy on the way, so I know he's really excited. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you. And one thing, you guys get paid for that, payroll I see on here? <laughs> no, oh. not at all. All right. Thanks, Brandon. All right. That's my agenda. Centennial Farms? Not much to update. Um, you know, we are looking into some options for fencing replacement repair painting um i'll probably have a better report on the farm next meeting on some directions i'd like to present to the commission but the one thing i can tell you a lot of the saturdays and sundays have been filling up with graduation parties it's a prime location um, for rentals if you're doing a family reunion grad parties that's our number one um, venue on the island that people are utilizing because you get you know, the inside, the outside, that you can have a bonfire out there. Um, and it's just it's just a pretty place to have a party. So if you're looking for, for a nice rental, just give us a call. We have a few, you know, openings. So it's just packing up quick. So plan ahead and, and give us a call on that. That's all I have. Thank you. Um, recreation land, no Brower Mayoring. Okay, local business, community groups. Um, Abby, did your dad send you with anything for uh, his, his yeah. things? Okay, we'll get to you in a minute then. <coughs> Recreation programs. All right, Miss Ethel Yops, we are going to get to you now for senior communications. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, first thing, I'd like to give a special thanks to the Fire Chief Murdoch and Fire Marshal Boudry for the presentation at the Gross Hill Senior Citizens Meeting last Tuesday, April 23. The program was open to all ages. They were very graciously explained and demonstrated the use of the AEDs, which are the defibrillators, that are now in many public places. The boxes do have specific instructions on them, and when opened, a voice takes you through the procedures, but seeing how to use them was most noteworthy. Some of the other things they spoke of for everyone, procedures if you have a fire, the use of life-saving equipment in the ambulance, and emergency vehicles needing every vehicle to pull over to the side of the road immediately when you hear the sirens, see the flashing lights, or see the special signals on the corners. If you cannot pull over, stop in place so they know what you're going to do. And do not continue on, just stop. You may be saving a life. The next meeting of the club is Tuesday, May 14, at 11.30 p.m. AM, Centennial Farm. The club is celebrating their 49th year this year, having been organized in 1970. And just as reminders, they have the Meals on Wheels. You call 1-800-851-1454 to apply for this program. For, these are mostly for homebound seniors. And the senior fitness continues with two classes, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, May 6 to June 21, from 9.15 to 10 a.m., and Tuesday and Thursday, May 7 through June the 20th, from 8.45 to 9.30 a.m. And both are at Centennial Farm Activity Room. And you'll find full, full 
de details in the recreation issue of Gross Seal Profile. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Ethel. Wendy Kearney, and you're going to introduce Abby, okay. right? Abby, you can go first if you want. Okay. So prom is coming up on May 4th already, so next Saturday. It's crazy. It's from yeah. 7 to 10 p.m., and it's at the Bentley and Wyandot this year. And today at um, Roseville High School, we had a distracted driving assembly, which was where representatives from the distracted driving program came in and talked to students about how texting and driving, um, drinking and drugs can lead to deadly and serious car crashes. Um, and juniors and seniors also got to do um, different activities that simulated the effects of being impaired. So it really taught students that, um, you know, distracted driving is a serious thing and we need to watch out for it more because high schoolers are new drivers. So it was a really great way to bring awareness to the situation. And make sure you come out and support our sports teams. Um, the following teams that are in session right now are um, boys and girls track, girls soccer, tennis, softball, and we got boys lacrosse, baseball, and golf. So if you can, make sure, come out and support. Um, I'm pretty sure the calendar is on the Grozeal website. So if you go on calendar, all of the games and time should be there. So that's all I have. How do we get the National Honor Society for volunteer work? I ask this at every meeting. How oh, do we yeah. go about when, that? When we have our meetings, they're supposed to be um, students that inform everyone about things coming up, but if, it, it hasn't really. Because um, we need some help at festival. We yeah, need some help sure, at the info booth. Yeah. And I'll have to do some stuff. And they're too young. Meeting for that. Do they, do they meet? We, did, we just had a meeting today. <sighs> but our next one, I think, is going to be in a few weeks because we're voting for um, a new board and stuff, so I can for sure... Can you let us know when yeah. that is? I think sure. we'll sure. stop in. All right, yeah, I can for sure say something about Island Fest and volunteers because there, there are people who need some service hours and would be willing to go out and help, so, yeah. Good. I was noticing your shirt, Fantasy Islands. Is that got anything to do with Grozeal? Yeah, this was from <laughs> uh, football season when they passed out the shirts and stuff, so... Oh, interesting. Oh. The youth. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Um, just to piggyback off of Earth Day, um, both Park Lane and Meridian celebrated Earth Day uh, Monday. It was at Meridian, um, so PAT sponsored uh, the event. So I had five, we had five different stations set up. So I just wanted to give a, a big thank you to Grozeal Nature and Land participated. So they had a booth. Um, they had the big huge thing of sand that had a bunch of stuff that the kids could like put their hands in yeah they gave out shells and just educated the kids on the importance of cleaning up after themselves and the beaches and things like that um also uh, lake erie metro park was there and sabrina who's been absolutely wonderful and she's been in both the schools uh throughout the school year brought in um well, she brought in a snake to Meridian and a turtle to Park Lane, but she had some other stuff, furs and stuff that the kids could feel, and and, uh, and she talked about that. We had a, a wonderful guy, Bill the Bee Guy, come in. Um, he actually had a big bee costume he dressed in. He brought some real bees in. He had the glass container, so the bees were in there. Um, and just educating the kids about the importance of bees, and if we didn't have them, you know, what, what things we would not have. Um, Gardens of Hope, which is now Community Grown Gardens. Is that right? Okay. I still call them Gardens of Hope. But um, thank you to, to um, Danielle and Travis. Travis came out and, uh, for both days and um, had the kids do some planting. So the kids actually did planted the seeds, and that's all going to go back to, gar um, to Community Grown Gardens. And uh, they're going to plant those, those items. So it was a, a big community upward with the kids. And then <clears throat> lastly, uh, Wayne County Recycling came out as well. And I know um, John's been at Earth Day. I think he was there last year. So either last year or the year before for um, the one that, that the... Um, that time. No, John through Wayne County Recycling. He came out um, Earth Day that um, um, they put on at the farms. And he came out to educate the kids just on the importance of, of recycling. So it was a great event. We had good feedback. Um, and the Didn't kids you have a lot time. to do with getting a lot of that stuff there? 
Oh, yeah, I do. I know, everything you just named. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. Wendy's yeah. like, well, I'm yeah. getting this, this, and this, and this. Yeah. And this one's not showing up. But it was, <laughs> it was nice because the kids each, it was a short period of time, but it was 10 minutes a session, so the kids then rotated and then got to go through everything, got a little bit of everything. So it was, it was a fun event. So it was fun, Then that's pretty much what I have. Thank you, Madam Secretary Wendy Kearney. Abby, I have one more thing to ask you. Are you on the soccer teams? No, I'm not. Oh, is that your sister? Yeah, my sister. Okay. Yep. <laughs> I was say, we want to give a big shout out to uh, Grozil Chaos Soccer Tournament that is also coming during Festival Weekend. They are uh, they've gone international. We have people from um, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, all over Michigan. We have, uh, like I said, international are coming from Canada. So we want to welcome everybody to, for the Grozil Soccer Association's fifth tournament during Island Fest Weekend. So welcome everybody when you get here. Okay, we have no action items, discussion items, extended public comment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Abby, you got anything else you want to bring? Abby, you good? I think I'm good. Brandon, good. Wendy? I'll just sign up to volunteer for Island Fest. We really need the, the support of the community, not only with volunteers, but also with sponsorships. So if you're interested, please do that, um, as well as the parade. Make sure that all those sports teams sign up because we need them as well. So that's Kyle? I, I do have something. Um, uh, I, I know a lot of Islanders are following what's happening at McLeod Steel, and that doesn't necessarily affect the Recreation Commission. But I think, I mean, the whole waterfront basically is going to be remade including the dte plant right in front of uh, the marina which i think is a huge property for the rec uh for the rec commission and, and the recreation department in general so i would just encourage everyone out there to to find ways to get involved a lot of these are in trenton um so trenton has a lot of say but we have our own ways of of uh influencing what happens on the waterfront with mcleod it's the epa um with uh the dte plan it will be dte that will decide what happens uh, with that property so um uh, i just encourage people to get involved and to to make your 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 thoughts known on what's happening um there and what you'd like to see there because i think our our waterfront's going to be basically remade for for generations and i think now's the time to to weigh in so i'd say that yeah thank you kyle ethel anything else nothing thank you Kim? yeah there's a, a couple of things i forgot to in my report couple of things from that are occurring in May before our next meeting. The Gross Hill Nature and Land Conservancy do have some programs I'd like to bring up. The FOG survey is May 10th at 8.30 p.m., and that is at the Detroit River um, Wildlife Refuge. And then Migrants on the Move is May 19th at 10 a.m., same place, Detroit River International Wildlife. So some May things. Also, another big island event is Herb Fest. Um, and that uh -huh. is May 18th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, and all this is in the profile, but I thought I'd just, if people are taking notes. Also, the Rotary Club is having a free shred event day on May 4th, and that is at Perdino's from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. And also, Rotary is doing a meet and greet on May 16th at 6.30 p.m., and that location is at Perdino's as well. So I didn't want to forget our community uh, recreation partners that help us out with many programs and things. So that's all I have. Well, thank you. And once again, I'd like to remember everybody, everybody remind you, CrozilIslandFest.com. Sponsorships, applications, vendors, exhibitors, volunteers, CrozilIslandFest.com. Our next meeting is going to be on Thursday, May 23rd at 6 p.m. I want to say hi to Phyllis and hi to Angela. I know you get your bath too. And uh, with that, I'd like a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Thanks, Brandon. Uh, at 6.58. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>